Shauna. How to become a remote notary or, or e-notary or a RON, all the same thing, all interchangeable. Doing remote notarizations or doing notarizations via Webtoon at your house online. Easy peasy, simple, expensive-ish type work. So how do you become one? Well, first you have to meet your state qualifications. Uh, basically, very first step, you have to be a notary, a traditional notary. So um, I know some of you are probably like, yeah, I'm in my process of being that. Or you're like, I'm already that. I just want to know after that, what's what, how we go into it. Uh, well, you have to then apply through your secretary of state, actually do an application through your state. So if you're like, well, how do I find the application? Just put like, we'll say my state, I'm in Texas. So I'll put like Texas Secretary of State remote notaries or e-notaries. Just Google it and it'll pop up or go to your Secretary of State. Say, I go to Texas, Texas Secretary of State. I open it up. Then I type in their search box, e-notaries, e-notary applications. That's how you do it. So the cost, there is a cost, uh, uh, application fee cost. Now it changes in different state, but roughly you're gonna pay typically around $50. And then plus there's like a, anywhere from two to 3% uh, convenience fee or yeah, convenience fee, an additional convenience fee, which is no more than like $1.52, $2, right? Uh, and then you're like, okay, I have to pay for that too, okay. But then you have to buy something called, get or buy something called a e-seal and a digital certification. Basically, you know how notaries have their, oh, where's my stamp? It's in my bag, way over yonder and I don't feel like getting it. So, but um, the stamp, bam, picture right there, a stamp. And then uh, your digital, a uh, digital, uh, basically electronic version of that. Uh, and then a digital certification. Uh, yeah. And then you have to buy those things, which there is some tomfoolery going around where there's some sites that make you think you have to pay more than what you actually have to pay. I'll get into that again in another video. Cause I'm all about giving you this free information. I don't charge you to know this information cause it's already online for free. Anyway, after you buy your electronic seal and your digital security, digital certificate, you're going to then choose what Ron or remote notary service or vendor, you're going to choose what platform you want to do your remote notary work or your e-notary work on. Okay. There's different websites called like doc, Ver Ver doc verify notarize, notarize not notary cam. Uh, Notary Live, si Safe Docs, si Sinex. Uh, there's different platforms where you can sign up to be a, I lost my turn. It's different platforms you can sign up to be a remote notary. Think of those different platforms, like say if you want to be a, 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 a delivery driver for food. You have Uber Eats, you have Grubhub, you have, uh, I don't really use delivery services though. I don't really know all the word rest of them. Think of about it like that. There's different platforms you can sign up to be e-notaries. However you do any one of those platforms you sign up for, you actually have to pay to be on them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's sucky. But after you or pick your, whoever you want to like sign up with, you're going to have to get a security bond for your remote notary. Yeah, you're gonna have to get another one of those. And then also you're gonna have to get uh, by E&O insurance or errors and emission insurance. I know you're gonna ask the question like, wait, as a traditional notary, when I applied or uh, I already bought E&O insurance, does that, or does my remote notary just fall under that too? Or is it a part of that? No, it's not. You have to buy an additional insurance for E-notary. Think of it like this, say, you bought a car, then you bought insurance on that car. Then your husband bought a car. You can't be like, wait, does the insurance on my car also cover his car? It, it, no, he needs his own insurance. Think of it like that. Your traditional notary needs its own insurance. Your remote notary needs its own insurance. It's as simple as that. And then lastly is that if your state in particular requires any, uh, any additional, documents 
you submit that as well. I know Texas don't require any additional documents. I do know like uh, one of you, a few of you states might require some training courses to do e-notary. Uh, but here in Texas, that's not a requirement. It's kind of easy to become a notary in Texas. Like as long as you pay them the money, they like, here you go. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to take exams, courses. Loan signing agent is a different thing, but just plain out notaries, you don't have to. As long as you give them the money, they like, you can be what you want. Uh, but yeah, that's the main steps if you want to become a remote notary. Yeah, check out the playlists above and below to get more information about these topics. And I'll see you guys later.